This is the Church of Pentecost Easter is About You series, The Rights of the Lost by Pastor Lonnie Wigner. It's, uh, it's, it's great to have the freedom to be able to come into the house of God and be able to worship, seek Him, and let the Holy Ghost move and do what He wants to do. Amen. That being said, I do feel like I have a message this morning that I, I want to bring to you. And uh, I will not be preaching long. It's not a long message today. I can, I can move through this rather quickly. But I gave ample time this morning for, for this move of the Holy Ghost. And now I want to move into a, a word of God this morning. Amen. If you have your Bible and you want to turn with me this morning, it's Luke chapter 15. And beginning at verse 4, 15 and verse 4 through 7. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home and calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. And I say unto you that likewise joy, amen, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. I believe all of heaven is rejoicing this morning because I believe we just had... A lot more than one. There was a whole bunch of us this morning repenting and seeking God and asking Him to touch us. More than over the ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Heaven gets more excited about that one repentant heart than it does about the ninety-nine that don't need repentance. Isn't that awesome this morning? Our God is concerned about the lost. Our God is, is concerned about the lost. I want to talk to you this morning. My message is called The Rights of the Lost. The Rights of the Lost. Lord, we love you. We thank you for a powerful move of the Holy Ghost. We ask you to continue that this morning. Bless, O oh Lord, in this place and move in us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. you may be seated. Everyone that has citizenship in the United States of America has rights. We even added to the Constitution the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights is the first ten amendments to the Constitution. I won't read them all this morning for the sake of my message and to bore you, and, but we know what some of them are, right? The first right we have is the right to free speech, to religion, to assembly, and to petition the government. We sit here not as other uh, churches or agencies would be able to do in times past. Because for the last 240 plus years, this has been a nation where you have freedom of religion. You can come and you can worship. I'm thankful for my freedom to worship this morning. And that's one of the reasons I come and worship the way I do. In other nations, in other places, you could not come and gather and worship as we have done. This morning, the Second Amendment is quite in the forefront right now is the right to bear arms. And everyone has their opinion on this. And if you uh, want to get a good argument started, just post on Facebook something about the right to bear arms and see who all responds. I'll skip through the third and fourth. The fifth is the right to due process. Or as many of you may recall, those that are often in trouble or in peril or going to court, they will plead the fifth. They don't have to speak out against themselves if they don't want to. Today we debate over all kinds of rights. Women's rights, gay rights, gun rights, students' rights, workers' rights, religious rights. It seems that everyone is concerned with rights. What should I be given rights Two, because of my particular religion or gender or ethnicity. I didn't come here this morning to be political or have a political speech 
or to stir up some hot topic of debate that you can put on Facebook or Twitter and create a bunch of shares and likes. But here this morning, I stand up for the rights of others. I want to address the rights that I feel that Jesus gave to a very particular group of people who needed to be heard and recognized and even sought after. There's a specific chapter in the Bible that is unique. It contains three consecutive parables about one particular group of people that should concern every one of us. We should seek to bring their rights before us today and to honor them. And I have already read the first group in this this morning in Luke chapter 15. When a man having a hundred sheep loses one of them, he leaves the ninety and nine and goes after that which is lost until he finds it. This morning, the first right of the lost is the right to be rescued. He said, I'll leave all of y'all to go out those doors to find me one that is lost. He said, I'll leave this group in order to go find me one that's not where they need to be. Church of Pentecost, we have an obligation to honor the rights of the lost. And their first right is the right to be rescued. Is there anybody in this place that this year you're going to determine I'm going to be a rescuer? I'm going to go find a lost person and I'm going to go honor their rights and I'm going to find them and I'm going to bring them back to the house of God so that all of heaven can rejoice because one sinner has came home and repented. We can't just be satisfied with having the majority this morning. We can't just be satisfied with having enough to get by. We must find the lost. They have the right to be rescued. The Bible says it like this. All we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone in this building at some point or another. We have all been lost. I once strayed too far away from home on my bicycle. And when I realized how lost I was. I remember fear. And I remember anxiety. There was no screaming for mama and daddy because I was too far from the house. I had gone past the perimeter that my parents had set for me. It was an unfamiliar territory in my life. And I'll never forget, I said, okay, I know this place right here and I'm headed back down this street and I'm going to travel it till I get back to where I know where I belong. I was so thankful when I got back into my perimeter. I was so thankful when I got back to my house where I knew that I belonged. No creature, according to Clark's commentary, no creature strays more easily than a sheep. None is more heedless and none so incapable of finding its way back to the flock when once gone astray. It will bleat for the flock and still run on in an opposite direction to the place where the flock is. This morning, I am here to tell you, they have the right to be rescued because they don't have the compass. They have lost their way. They don't know how to find the God that they should be serving. They don't know how to find the church that they need to be uh, attached to and a part of. This morning, Church of Pentecost, we need to honor the rights of the lost and we need to determine it is time for them to be rescued. It is time for them to be brought back into the place. They stray too easily and they can't find their way back. I think that we probably understand this greater as a parent this morning than any other way. Anybody ever lost track of a child? I'll never forget, we lost Clark one night in, in Dillard's. We were shopping and, uh, you know, children like to get up under the racks. And uh, as short as he was, if he was under the rack, there wasn't no finding him. And uh, we were in a certain area shopping and, and he disappeared and, and I thought, well, maybe he ran back to Mama. So I went back to find Mama, and I got to her. I said, have you seen Clark? No, I hadn't seen Clark. 
And so we both then felt the panic of parents in a mall shopping and your kid has disappeared. Amen. Oh, I was glad when he came and we found him and we, we, we brought him back uh, and got, got our arms back around him, right? And he was a little fearful himself, you know, not knowing where we had gone to. He thought maybe the rapture had taken place, you know. And mom and dad had gone and left him at the mall. And when they're lost like that, how do they know where to come back to? How will they find their way? The Word compares us to these sheep, not able to find our way back if we are left to our own. This, the lost sheep would never save himself or find the shepherd himself if the shepherd did not go looking for the sheep. Church of Pentecost, if we're going to rescue people, they're not just going to, we're not just going to open the doors and sing some music and just have a great church service and the lost come running in the doors. They have a right to be rescued this morning. And that right means on Monday through Saturday, we should leave out of this place and we should go find the lost. And we should go knock on their door. And we should make a phone call to them. And we should make contact with them and say, Hey, listen, I've been missing you. Are we willing to do what it takes to reach those that are lost? Quit criticizing and go find them. Quit criticizing the lost and go find them. Put them on your shoulders and bring them back home. It is the right for them to be rescued. How many times have we heard the story of a bad decision by a hiker or someone that's doing some exploration and they go past the limits of nature and they find themselves in need of a rescue. We don't just sit back and go, oh well, they shouldn't have went past the perimeter. Oh well, they shouldn't have went to that place and put themselves in danger. No, we gather up the supplies and we get the dog that can sniff them out and we go heading out into the treacherous area ourselves to go rescue those that are lost. This morning, this church has got to get a new determination that this year and this Easter season, the great shepherd that came and became the Lamb of God for us, it is time for us to recognize this year it's, he came and gave. It's about you. It's about the lost. Don't forget about the lost. You used to be one. Don't forget. Go find them. They have the right to be rescued. Their second right is the right to be returned. As you follow this chapter, you see that there's a woman having ten silver coins in verse 8 through 10. If she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, Sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it. And when she has found it, she calls her friends and neighbor together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which was lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who repents. When this lady found her lost coin, there was no doubt as to who it belonged to. She called her friends. And they threw a party. And no one could say, oh, that was my coin. I, I think I lost one of those. No, she knew that was her coin. She knew who it belonged to. And the same applies to the lost humanity that is before us. There is no doubt to whom they belong. There is no doubt to who they belong. All of heaven and God himself rejoice when that one lost is found. We got, we had a dog, a little, a, a little black cocker spaniel, and her name was Tar Baby. And Tar Baby passed away, uh, and then my brother still liked dogs, and so we bought another one, a champagne colored, and uh, we called that one Champ. And, uh, and so one day... A champ uh, was out by him, uh, himself out in the yard and, and was playing and a stranger came by and I guess the stranger showed some attention to him and, and champ just went on down the road and, and champ didn't know how to find his way home I guess and so I don't know if he followed the stranger all the way home or just got himself to a place where he couldn't, couldn't find us but champ was lost and so we were worried about champ and couldn't find champ and... and uh, and uh, so my grandfather was returning home uh, there uh, on Rapids Avenue one day from his shop, and he found and he saw a dog that looked just like Champ. 
tied up in the front yard of somebody else's house. And so he went up. My grandfather was quite witty. My grandfather Clark was a mess. He was something. Many of you knew him. But he, uh, he used to sell insurance. So he just made a block around and came back, went up to the house and was going to pretend to be an insurance salesman. And when he did, when he saw the dog, he said, Hey, champ, how's it going? And champ's tail started wagging. And Champ got all excited, and, and the people come out of the house said, that's not Champ, that's Ginger. He said, no, no that, that's not. So he just kind of let it all be. He obliged them, they refused the insurance, and he left. Only to go home and call the police and say, I need you to meet me at this place. I think these people have my grandson's dog. And when they got there, the police was trying, he listened to my grandfather's story, and he listened to their story, and finally my grandfather said, Hey, champ, come over here. And what do you think champ did? Champ ran straight to my grandfather. He knew his name, and he knew he belonged to. Hear me this morning. The world knows who they belong to. We know who we belong to this morning. Amen. And they is, there is no question of ownership. The lost sinner has the right to be returned to its rightful owner. And the third story that's in this message and in this parable uh, in, in chapter 15 is the last one. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Can I tell you, they have the right, to be rescued. And they have the right that they, of the ownership. And they also have the right to be restored. The lost has a right to be restored. When he came to himself, the word says, I'll just go home and be a servant. They have enough food to eat and I won't have to live in this pig pen I'll just return back to my home and live my life out as a servant. Not so fast, prodigal son. Not so fast. You have some rights, amen? And the word says you don't have just the right to come home, but you have the right to be restored. This morning, I believe we have a God of restoration. I believe we have a God that can restore things to back to where they're supposed to be. And I believe when you come back into the kingdom of God, amen, he's going to put a robe on you. He's going to put a ring on your finger. He's going to put new sandals on your feet. And he's going to call all heaven together. And they're going to say, guess what? What used to be lost has been found. And it's time for him to be restored and brought back. My son was dead and now is alive. Oh, somebody ought to worship this morning. How many of you have been restored? How many of you have been pulled out of the pig pen and, and cleaned up and given a new robe and given new shoes and given a ring of responsibility that God has said, hey, listen, you're not just going to be brought back and be a servant. You're going to be restored. Oh, you have the right of restoration this morning. Somebody needs to hear me this morning. The devil is beating you up. Your enemy's telling you not worthy. The enemy's saying you're just going to have to live your life out as a servant. No way. That's not my God. My God says no in repentance. And in true repentance today, I'm going to bring restoration to them. Amen. I'm going to bring more than just bringing them back into the house and saying, you got to live your life out as an underling. No, my son was dead and is alive. He wasn't just satisfied with his son's return, but he said, I'm restoring what was lost. The lost has a right to restoration. Praise team, would you come? The words of the son are these. I am no longer worthy to be called your 
son. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. I took my possessions. I took what was mine. And in my rebellion, I walked out on you. And I went and I riotously lived my life. And I spent everything that I have. And I had friends and we had a party. But at some point, the party came to an end. I am no longer worthy to be your son. That's what the enemy will tell you this morning. That's what the enemy of your soul will tell you this morning, that you're not worthy to be a son. You may not feel like you have any rights to the Father's house, but I am telling you today, you are mistaken. Amen? You are mistaken. I don't care what you've been in. I don't care how far you've gone. I don't care what you've done. You have the right to be restored. We have a prodigal's ministry of this church. We want you to come and put those prodigal's names in that box. We got some lists out there. Some of you need to go by on your way out today and pick up. Make sure that all of the lists are out and being prayed for. In my wallet is my list. Those of you that are in here, you have turned in names. You wouldn't believe. Some of you would not even know who's on my, on my list this morning. But, but uh, believe that I, I pray for some of your family and some of your kids. But already this year... I baptized a lady's daughter. She said, I put all my kids. Last Sunday, I baptized one of those children in that baptistry right there. Because, and she believed because I put my daughter's name on my list. I've got to be careful not to spill all this money that I have in here out. But our credit cards. These are my 24 names that I'm calling out for prodigals. And some of you would be surprised at some of the names that are on my list. It's some of your children, grandchildren, parents, lost people. Lost people. 24 in my wallet. 24 that could be touched by my prayer. Amen? And we're spreading that around. And we're praying. And you know what we're going to pray over our prodigal, Sister Matthews? This is what we're going to pray over these prodigals. That they can understand their rights. Oh, hallelujah. That somehow, wherever they are, and wherever they've gone, and how far they've gone astray, they have rights. They have the right to be rescued. They have the right to be returned to their rightful owner. And they have the right to be restored. Oh, Heavenly Father, we got to reach the lost. We got to touch lost humanity. We got to bring people into truth, oh God. We got to see it happen. Can I tell you this morning? Jesus didn't tell parables by mistakes, He knew exactly how He phrased every parable that He gave. And it's amazing that if you go to the top of this chapter, you see that he's, the scribes and the Pharisees, they're ranting and raving because he's not eating with them, he's not sharing with them, he's not visiting with them. He's with the sinners. It says they were criticizing him because he was with the sinners and the publicans. You know where he wanted to be? He wanted to be in the midst of lost humanity. He said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost oh thank you Jesus you knew where I would be in 2018 you knew where I would be 51 years ago almost now when I was born you knew exactly where I was nothing by accident nothing by coincidence you designed my life and you wove your pattern into my life and you said I'm going to find him do you understand that the scribes and Pharisees were almost, they taught a, a, a particular part that said that God didn't search you. You barely got back into His presence. You were privileged if you were able to even work your way back into His presence. And then He comes along and says, don't listen to all of them, i got a word for you. I'm a shepherd. And I'll leave 99 righteous ones to go find one sinner. 
I don't need the 99 righteous. I want the one that's lost. I want the one that's undone. And he goes and he picks him up and puts him on his shoulders and says, I'm not going to make you walk back. Now see, if I'd have been the daddy, if I'd have been the one that went and found my lost kid, I said, no, you're going to walk back. You're going to run back. Because you scared me so bad and you made me have all these anxiety and now that i found you and you better hurry up and get to that house and you better hope that I get some mercy and grace before I get there. Because if not, judgment's going to be applied. No. No, not, not this shepherd. He said, I'm going to go find you. There are people that came out of bars. There are people that came out of hell holes. There are people that came out of crack houses. And they sit on these chairs today because they had rights that were God-given rights. Amen. God-given rights. The right to be rescued and the right to be returned.